Well, we're back on the topic of Brendan Kavanaugh and the group of Chinese, what would you call them, tourists? I'm not really sure what you would refer to them as, but the group of Chinese there at St. Pancras Station and the viral chaos that has ensued. Now, this story has been covered in pretty much every different way you can think of. Now, the, my perspective comes in simply due to the fact that I'm here in China. I've been here for a decade. I speak Chinese. I've traveled throughout the country, and I'm very familiar with Chinese people, the way they think, the Chinese lifestyle, Chinese culture. So I think I might be able to add a little insight or perspective to the situation. And yesterday, I released a video. You see, I went online. I wanted to see what the reaction of people in mainland China has been to this story. Because if you let things spread organically, there's no doubt about it. This story would be well known in China. Now, what happened in that video yesterday, I went to the basically the Google of China. It's called Baidu. It's the biggest search engine of China. I did a search, I did a couple searches, and basically came up empty-handed, no results. So then I went to China's equivalent of Twitter, a website called Weibo, and again there I essentially came up empty-handed. So the one thing I can take away from that experience is that this story is not being pushed out. At least, to some degree, this story is being suppressed, although it is not being outright censored. It's obvious there's definitely not a complete blackout on it, and the way I found out about that is basically from you guys commenting in the comment section here and saying, hey, I found it, I found a lot of videos. So I took note, and I knew I could go back and find it, and it was you guys that helped me with that. So a big shout out to everyone who let me know that in the comments section. So today was take two. I went back onto the Chinese internet and I looked up this story using different search terms. You can see here I found no shortage of videos of the actual event. Now what I'm looking for is to see the top comments, the reactions of actual mainland Chinese. And unfortunately, with basically every platform in China, especially anything that's similar to Twitter or like social media, video and streaming websites, you have to log in using your ID and create an account. It's directly connected to your ID card. And I just don't like doing that. I try to stay as unconnected as I possibly can. Not that I'm particularly worried about it. I just don't like doing that. And generally, I don't really care to see what's in the comments section. For the most part, I stay off of Chinese social media. But for this situation, I wanted to see it. So I wasn't able to see the comments from all these different video streaming platforms. So I found an article online that's been viewed a ton of times. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments, some of which have been liked thousands of times. So I thought, you know what? That's a big enough sample pool to kind of put my fingers on the pulse of what the status quo is here in China and kind of at least get an idea of how people People here in China are reacting to the situation. So this article is entitled, What's Your Take or What's Your Opinion on the Situation Between the British Live Streamer and the Chinese Tourists at St. Pancras Station in London? And I went down to the comments and I found approximately the 10 highest ranked or most liked comments. So essentially I found the 10 top comments. So we're going to go through these top 10 comments. I've translated them for you, and I'm going to read through. Now, some of them are kind of long, so you're going to have to bear with me. For example, the number one top most liked comment to this article was quite a long one. So the top comment was as follows. Ah, oh, no, why did these people break their defense by saying kami? The main thing is that the English of this group of Chinese is really funny. The man said, it's just a relationship between you and me, you and I. What the Chinese man meant was that it was just business between us and had nothing to do with the others. The old man looked confused. What relationship? Usually it refers to that kind of relationship. The old man thinks that the young guy might be G-A-Y. And then the old man said, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, which is an English proverb, which means that if you are in the local area, you must abide by the local laws. The young man then said, are you Roman? The girl at the front didn't want the old man to take a photo. So she said, we are no disco. So what she meant was we have signed a non-disclosure agreement with a third party. The old man heard that we were not dancing disco here and confirmed it twice with the Chinese girl. Finally, the old man asked, it's not disposable? 
this is not a one-time use? Then the Chinese girl said, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. She didn't explain it clearly in the end. I couldn't help laughing. And the expression of the Chinese man at the back is so crucial. He said, we cannot show our face and voice in the image. It is very sensitive. It's for our security or we will take legal action. I guess he meant if our image and our content today were shared by a YouTuber, there might be an infringement of our NDA agreement, and so on and so forth. As a result, the Chinese tried to save face, then he acted sensitive, and then he went to the legal threats. The old man couldn't deal with it. WTF, he was thinking, pointing at these people, the little red flag on it, and directly said, The UK is a free country. We're not in communist China. And the Chinese man exploded. There was also the Chinese guy's classic line, Don't touch her! You're not the same age! STOP TOUCHING HER! The old man stepped back and looked at the guy in confusion. No, what do you mean you can't touch her if you're not born in the same year? Let's put aside this blind date and see the horoscopes. The Chinese girl wearing a black veil also spoke Chinglish. She probably wanted to provoke the old man and say, Who are you? As a result, he said, who are you? Twice, which completely broke my defense through the screen. Correspondingly, the Chinese guy's classic first grade primary school textbook question. What's your name? The response received was the old man's British, what's your name? And then everything entered the funny stage. There's also a video that is a prequel to this video. Jim was the old man in a gray down jacket next to the old man in sunglasses, and he went to say hello to them. It was very friendly at first. Jim kept saying that she looked very Japanese and they had previously collaborated with a Japanese TV station to film a similar show. The Chinese girl was always, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not Japanese. What are you doing? There was also the most classic, don't shoot him. The original intention of the Chinese girl was not to shout at him, don't shout at him, but she ended up saying, don't shoot him. Later, the old man directly made a video and asked MI6 to investigate whether there were any snipers ambushing around. Anyway, it was a joke. The poor English of these Chinese people made the old man confused. The more they communicated, the more this whole situation turned into a comedy show. This could probably be a skit in the Spring Festival Gala. The title could be, don't shoot him, ha ha ha. So you can see from that top comment that was upvoted over 2,000 times that this mainland Chinese individual was not taking the side of the Chinese group there. They weren't exactly taking a side of anybody, but this person obviously had sort of a lighthearted and humorous perspective and take on the whole situation. The second most upvoted comment, which this is a funny one, went as follows. The man said, You violated our image rights. The old foreign man said, but this is a public place. The Chinese man said, we are not allowed to show our faces. Our information is very sensitive. This is illegal in our country. The old foreign man said, then you can just leave. The Chinese woman said, yes, but, but. The old foreign man said, but this is Great Britain, not Vietnam. The woman said, yes, but, but I am also British. The old foreign man said, then why are you holding the Vietnamese flag, pointing to the flag in her hand? The young Chinese man next to him suddenly yelled, why did you touch her? Stop! Don't touch her! Don't touch her! You are very different in age! The old foreign man took two steps back in fright, his face full of surprise. Then the man continued to yell, don't touch her! 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 And he goes on with about ten more don't touch hers. Feel it, everyone. Don't touch her, please. Touch her. Do not touch her. Please, you are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Don't touch her. Please don't touch her. Please don't. Don't, 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 yeah. don't, don't touch her. Don't touch her. Please don't touch her. Please don't touch her. Please don't touch her. No, we love your art. We love your music. But we are trying to have because you're touching my friend. I personally thought that comment was quite hilarious. The third top comment. The most anti-intellectual thing is that the female blogger later posted a video saying that the British pianist thought that the red flag in her hand was the communist flag. The female blogger immediately said that this comment was controversial and disrespectful. I'm surprised. Our country is a country governed by the Communist Party. Communism is our belief and realizing communism is our goal. Why do you say that the communist flag is controversial and impolite? 
So you guys can see, if you're feeling anything like me, these are not exactly the type of responses that I expected to get. I've seen on a number of occasions where the Chinese typically end up taking the other Chinese person's side, but in this situation, it doesn't seem that they are. In fact, it seems that they're kind of roasting the Chinese group. I mean, these Chinese netizens' comments are pretty awesome. They're showing a great sense of humor. They're not taking the whole thing too seriously. And yes, you can find some hateful comments. You can find those in any comment section if you go through long enough. But these are the top comments, and these are not like hateful or nasty comments. So to be honest, I'm quite pleasantly surprised and impressed by the Chinese reaction. Top comment number four. If the nationalities were switched, a Chinese internet celebrity pianist performed on the street and recorded a video... Two tourists from the UK politely asked the Chinese internet celebrity to delete the video showing their faces, and then after the Chinese internet celebrity refused, a conflict broke out. The comments section would look entirely different. Top comment number five. So proud. A British man not only holds the Chinese flag while shopping in the UK, but also uses Chinese law to protect himself, although he uses it incorrectly. So again, a great sense of humor from this guy. Top comment number six. This is kind of a long one, guys. Thanks for the invitation. You asked the right person. I do street photography in the UK, and this is very important. Please don't rely on your own imagination to think about the rationality of your actions. There is law in everything. First of all, the matter happened in the UK based on the territorial principle. Under British law, any filming in public does not require the consent of any other person as long as the likeliness of another person is not used for an explicit commercial purpose. Many people in the comments below mentioned live broadcasts and the same is true for live broadcasts except for some sensitive occasions such as kindergartens, military bases, courts, etc. The laws in the UK are very different from those in Europe and other Western countries. For example, in Germany, if someone else is present in the content you shoot and you plan to publish the content, you need to obtain the consent of the person concerned. But even so, there are so many domestic travel bloggers and broadcasters who live and broadcast and go film from a first-person perspective in other countries. How many of them have you seen go up and ask every passerby in the video whether or not they're allowed to use their image in their video? I've seen it all. There are no double standards here. Another point to note is that, contrary to common perception, train stations in the UK often belong to private properties. The location in the video is St. Pancras Station. I have been there so many times that I can almost recognize it just from a glance. As for whether this place supports shooting and video recording, the official website makes it very clear and the police will handle it accordingly. Now guys, just let me interject. This person also put a ton of screenshots from Western websites and from the, the actual station's website showing the policies, showing the rules. I mean, these were screenshots from Western websites posted right there within her comment. So she really put a lot of time into this comment of hers. Now I will continue with her comment here. I have also put down the relevant laws regarding the filming of images in the UK. I'm struggling with the issue of live streaming. I don't know whether it's because of the third picture can't be displayed or because I didn't translate the picture. It's not illegal to live broadcast for commercial purposes, but it's illegal to specifically use other people's portrait rights for profit without their permission. If the purpose of this video is to specifically follow a few tourists and then broadcast it live to make money without the other party's permission, then it is illegal. Whether this live broadcast is specifically to make money from the occasional passers by, I think we can rely on common sense. I know there are still people who will take advantage of it. In fact, I very much hope that a few tourists will not give up and sue this internet celebrity quickly so that the law can be spread. There are other bloggers on YouTube who have started to make videos specifically about this matter. You can go check it out. Well, I've got to interject again. Actually, they can't go check it out because YouTube is blocked in China. Again, everyone expresses his or her own opinion. I just expressed my thoughts on it. No need to argue with me, and I don't want to convince anyone to accept my thoughts. Invite me to answer, and I will tell you my opinion. If you have an opinion, just answer it directly. Top comment number seven. Basically, those who have become foreigners or have lived abroad for a long time but still want to eat at the mouth of the official family are a bunch of ruthless and cowardly people. Let's call them ruthless because they like to establish a persona that doesn't rub dirt in their eyes. They promote self-management awareness abroad, and it is common for them to exchange insults with foreigners. For example, the man from the video that shouted, watch the car, or there was a Japanese blogger who caused a scene in a restaurant some time ago. They were all the same way. Call them cowardly because if someone really associates them with positive energy, they just won't be happy. Just like this time when the British asked them if they were commies. 
They directly said that this was racial discrimination. Top comment number eight. When shooting in this kind of public place, passersby have no right to privacy, which means they can capture you in the frame. But you can turn on your own recording equipment and ask them why they shot the material. If the other person says they shot it for their YouTube account, you can first ask them what their account is and then give them a friendly reminder. Unfortunately, with all due respect, I cannot agree to my image being used for this purpose. To avoid unnecessary trouble for you, I highly recommend that you do not use this material. If you feel that this is an unfair loss to you, you can contact this number and my lawyers can handle your reasonable claims. By speaking this way, the other person knows that you are not joking and that you are not easy to deal with. Now that I have said this, frankly speaking, you better not think that you can really do whatever you have the right to do. Because I have the right to do a lot of things to you, enough for you to consider and think about. Again, polite, rigorous, and professional intimidation is much better than violent, chaotic, and flamboyant intimidation. When you show hostility, it is best to let the other party realize that the initiative have, has been lost, the danger is unpredictable, and there there's just no chance. Being rude when threatening others is a sign of defective social development and lack of ability to deal with problems. No one will accept threats from a child, even if the child is truly dangerous. Top comment number nine. A British person holds a Chinese flag and asks another British person to abide by Chinese laws in the UK. This is quite magical. And last but not least, top comment number 10. Now, this wasn't actually top comment number 10 in, in the number of votes. It, it had over 300 upvotes when I saw it. But I saw it within the comments section a couple of times, and they, basically they've made a meme, and it's just really, really funny. And it translates as this. You said, don't touch her. What's going on here? <laughs> and then you can see the pictures that are posted of that young lady and her ostensible boyfriend. So there you have it, guys. There are a lot more comments, but you can see how long this video is, and I only went through the top 10. But I will say that I'm pleasantly surprised and impressed by how the Chinese handled this. The main takeaway I've got from reading their comments is that they handled it in pretty much a lighthearted way and injected a lot of humor into it, and they saw the humor in the situation. Sometimes with situations like this, it's easy for the comments section to really get nasty and hateful, and it looks like in this situation, that's not really happening, at least from what I've seen. And it also looks like a lot of people in mainland China are not really impressed by that group of Chinese that were there at the station, especially that loud mouth drama queen with the whole, don't touch her, keep your hand off of her, she is not the same age as you. Why you're touching her? Stop touching her! Don't touch her, please. It seems like that guy is essentially turning into a meme all over the world, including his motherland of mainland China. That's all for the video, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed it, found it interesting. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. Most of the time, I make travel content. I go to a lot of cool places, mostly in China, but sometimes I get out of China and check out some other countries as well. Also, please give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment. This will help out a lot with the algorithm. It will help to spread the reach of this video. And if you want to go that extra mile, I do have a Patreon page as well as a Buy Me a Coffee. So any contributions, any support from you guys is truly, truly appreciated. And I hope to catch you all in the next video. Xiaozi, zaijian. I'm sorry, this is the end of the conversation.